Guy and Dane, and welcome to Reykjavik Grapevine newscast number 122. My name is John Pearson, I'm a journalist at the Reykjavik Grapevine, and uh, today is Monday the 2nd of August, it's a holiday here in Iceland. Um, regular viewers will notice that I'm still not Father Gretesen, he's on uh, holiday with uh, Polly the Wonder Dog, um, I can tell you a little bit more about what they're up to later. But right now I'm here with Art, and we're going to uh, give you some news headlines and see if we can keep the wheels on the news wagon while Valor's away. And uh, so let's have at it. So today, Art and I have brought you to the Seltjarnarnes Peninsula, which is just on the northwest side of Reykjavik. It's a peninsula just right out into the sea. And we're actually on the island of uh, Grotta, which has a lighthouse on it, which you can see there. A little lighthouse built in 1947. And uh, it's a little spit of land which actually gets cut off quite often by the tide. Um, we're just about to hopefully go over it before the tide comes in. Um, there's so much wildlife, wildlife here. It's a beautiful place to come for a walk, and I, and I often do. Um, we get seals sometimes in the bay here. Um, and at the moment, there are Arctic terns. Uh, they're just at the end of their nesting season, <coughs> which means that we can actually come onto the island. But the nesting season is only just over, and the Arctic terns are still a little bit uh, territorial, which is why we're walking this way and not that way where the nests are. Um, they are sort of prone to... Uh, dive bombing people uh, if they get too close to the nest. So if you see me being attacked by a bird, that'll be why. But we're going to try and stay away from the nest as far as possible. Um, over there you can see uh, Kekler, which is the dormant volcano, and just to the right of it is the active volcano, uh, where uh, Alina was last week, so you can watch her uh, report on the newscast from there. And over here we've got the other side of the bay as well. Um, quite often we see seals here, and quite often we see surfers as well, because the surfers will go in there in all sorts of weather. It's very calm at the moment, you couldn't surf it, obviously, but uh, in winter, when it's windy, you can get some real swell in there and there's some, uh, some great surfing conditions. Um, it's three degrees or no more than five degrees in that water, so you've got to be pretty hardcore, in my opinion, to go and surf it. But uh, that's where it is. That's where the good surfing is around here. Um, and yeah, so it's just a, a very beautiful place to come. Uh, this is uh, a bank holiday weekend here. Um, it's called uh, Vesteluna Mannahelgi. I'm sorry, I had to consult my phone for that. Uh, which actually means Merchant Weekend or Shopkeeper's Weekend. And it's the uh, Icelandic holiday, uh, Bank Holiday Monday, the first Monday in August, where um, the shopkeepers are supposed to have a day off, but now everybody has a holiday. Um, frequently what people do is they go camping, so the campsites are really full this weekend. They go away. Uh, People go to their summer houses as well, which is what Valor and Polly have done. And uh, just to let you know what they're into, uh, what they're up to at the moment. They're back next week, actually. Uh, but at the moment, they're at a summer house somewhere in the south of Iceland where there have been power cuts. So uh, without power, and apparently it's raining a lot. As you can see at the moment, we don't have particularly summery weather in Iceland. I guess the clue's in the name, Iceland. Um, but at the moment, the weather's been pretty wet and in the south. And Valor uh, posted a picture on Instagram of Polly looking very wet through, so hopefully she's had some hugs and a warm towel since then. Anyway, so that's what we're going to be doing. <clears throat> I'm going to be looking at my phone in the style of Valor, because if it's good enough for the boss, it's good enough for me. And this is where my notes are. So uh, there are quite a few other people around today. I think everybody's no thought it was a nice place to come for a, a visit today. So, um, yeah, we're just going to get on with the uh, headlines and bring you some news. So... First up, unfortunately, as the previous two weeks, the lead story is COVID, which does appear to be spiralling up in Iceland. Uh, on Friday, last Friday, so we had 145 um, new domestic cases. You remember that maybe from the last uh, newscast last week, I said there were 95 new domestic cases on the preceding Friday. So you can tell then that in one week, the Friday figures have jumped by 50%, more or less 50%, which is obviously um, not good. Two thirds of those people uh, diagnosed were not in uh, isolation, were not in quarantine at the time. So there's a lot of capacity for it to have spread. 
in the community. We've got 10 people in the hospital at the moment, two people in the ICU. Um, and those two people are not vaccinated or were not vaccinated. And uh, the vaccination programme continues in Iceland. We currently have about 70% uh, of, of the population vaccinated, but there's still more work to do and, and hopefully um, the vaccination will program will help to curb this new outbreak, a lot of which is a Delta variant, to answer some questions from people last week. So <clears throat> this has had an effect on travel, which will be of interest to a lot of people who uh, watch these videos, people who are thinking of coming to Iceland. Um, as I reported last week, there are travel restrictions now in that uh, you have to have a negative PCR test or a negative rapid antigen test to come to Iceland. That's across the board. Doesn't matter whether you live here or not. Doesn't matter whether you're a citizen of Iceland, a resident of Iceland or a foreigner. So most of the time the uh, airlines are gonna be enforcing that so that when you get your, on your flight, most airlines won't let you on unless you have such a test to come to Iceland. Um, but if you do get to the border, um, if you're foreign, it's quite likely they won't let you in. But even Icelanders are going to be charged a 100,000 kroner uh, fine at the border for not having a uh, negative PCR or rapid antigen test. That's quite a lot of money. So for Brits, that's about 580 quid. For Americans, that's about $810. So worth avoiding. The airlines are taking a different approach to this. There are quite a few airlines flying to Iceland, Air, uh, flying to Iceland at the moment. It's not just Iceland Air and Play, the two Icelandic airlines. Quite a few airlines are, are operating now, but the Icelandic airlines are taking slightly different approaches. Uh, Iceland Air, the national flag carrier, is not allowing on foreign nationals who don't have a test, but it is allowing on Icelandic nationals who don't have a test. Um, but it's warning them that they're going to get charged, they're going to get fined 100,000 kroner at the border, which is, you know, fair enough. Um, Play, the new entrant to the, uh, to the scene in Iceland, to the airline team are taking a different approach. They're not allowing anybody on board that doesn't have a test, regardless of your nationality. Um, and uh, Bigir Jonsson, the CEO, who is uh, formerly the drummer in heavy metal band Dimmer, which I quite like, because I don't know, I just love the fact that a heavy metal drummer became the CEO of an airline in Iceland. But anyway, he has said uh, they're doing it to protect their staff and that they have a right to do that because um, under airline regulations, uh, they have a right to uh, deny boarding to anybody who doesn't have, um, who, to anyone who might endanger others. And his argument is that um, they endanger others. I just want to, while we're walking past it, just point out this lovely little antique fish drying rack. These kind of things you find on, on coastal areas around uh, Iceland quite a bit. Um, they're not used anymore, but they're just left up as a kind of, you know, attractive, uh, rustic, uh, artifact really. Um, it's where they used to, uh, the fishermen used to hang the fish to dry and uh, it doesn't have any purpose now other than to, you know, look nice and, and rustic. But anyway, so go back to the, uh, to the play uh, scenario. They're not letting anybody on without uh, a negative test. What will happen is that they will uh, offer to reschedule your test, uh, your flight, for free. And so I guess you just have to kind of go away and come back when you have the, the, uh, the negative test, whether that means you go away and just get the test and come back straight away and they put you on the next flight, or you go away and have to recover from COVID wherever you are to get tested, to get a negative test to get on a flight. But uh, either way, um, that's what they're doing uh, to protect their staff. So that's worth knowing if you're flying here in the near future. So COVID hasn't really, over the last week of restrictions, uh, brought about the sort of collapse in tourist numbers that the Icelandic Tourist Board had feared. Um, there was a, a, a bit of noise from the Icelandic Tourist Board and from some conservative politicians in Iceland about the border restrictions um, when they came in. People were worried that it would damage the slowly recovering tourist trade. The figures over the last week don't seem to support that, um, but it is only a week, so we'll have to see. I think when you think about it rationally, really, most people who are coming to Iceland, if they're going on a holiday, they've booked a flight, they've got time off work, they've booked some accommodation, they've booked some tours, they've probably got some extraordinarily expensive car hire, um, and the hassle and, 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 and the expense of 
getting a test before they come is probably a drop in the ocean. So I would imagine that most people aren't put off by the test. So, um, yeah, so the numbers haven't changed there very much. Um, we'll see what happens when the, the ECDC uh, come out with their new figures, uh, with their new uh, recommendations on Thursday. That's the European Centre for Disease Control. I know it sounds like the name of a, an Australian rock band, ECDC, but it isn't. And they're the people who come up with the map, the colour-coded map of uh, European countries, green, orange and red. Iceland has been a green country from a Covid perspective since January, and it's been the only European country that's been entirely green uh, during that time. Bits of Greece were, I think, during that time, but we've been... We've done well in that respect, um, but that's changed now. On Thursday, they downgraded Iceland to orange. And um, we expect on Thursday, this week, with the figures going the way they are, they will downgrade Iceland to a red country. Because the figures are, the figures have a, uh, they're a two week average, so there's a little bit of a lag in, in, in how they respond. So um, what that will mean for you, if you're traveling to Iceland, kind of depends on your country and its attitude. Um, for example, in the US, I know that the State Department have their own method of uh, assessing countries with respect to COVID. I think Iceland at the moment is a, is a category three, which means reconsider travel. It's been like that since mid-June. Um, so they haven't reacted to the recent changes in numbers in July. Um, who's to say whether they will or not? Um, and who knows what the UK will make of European figures since the UK doesn't really pay too much attention to Europe anymore. So whether the ECDC's figures actually have any bearing on UK government policy is, uh, is entirely up to them. But if you're coming from a European country, it's worth keeping an eye on the ECDC rating because it may well affect how uh, you travel here or more properly how you, uh, more probably how you return to your country, whether you need to quarantine after you've been in Iceland or not. Um, this brings us on to Marston Shop. So last week, if you were watching, I mentioned that there was some um, confusion about masks in shops. Um, last time we had all this, uh, it was very clear. We had a two-metre rule, two-metre proximity rule, and if you went into a shop, you wore a mask. It was a pretty easy-to-understand blanket thing, and people just understood it and got on with it. Uh, this time, we've got a one-metre rule and a somewhat unclear policy. Um, if you go to covid.is, which is the place that we always recommend you go to for Icelandic COVID advice, and it's linked to in the description below, uh, they will tell you if you're in a shop, wear a mask. But if you actually look at the regulations, the laws that were passed uh, for, these most recent, um, for these most recent measures, they say, they're a bit vaguer, they sort of say, oh, well, if, you're, if, you, if a place isn't well ventilated, um, and you can't guarantee that you'll be within, you can't guarantee that you won't be within one metre of a person, wear a mask. But if you walk into a shop, how on earth do you tell if it's well ventilated or not? And you can't stop people coming within a metre of you in a shop. Um, anyone who's been in bonus on Luigave will be able to attest to that. And um, so most of the shops are just kind of making up their own uh, rules. Um, the, the health minister who came up with the regulations actually said, if you're in a shop, wear a mask but that's kind of not what her own regulations say. So um, I went into a bonus in uh, Lugive yesterday. Um, the very helpful man on the door was handing out masks to people that didn't have masks. Everybody wore a mask, everybody came in and everybody just kind of got on with their shopping. So if you're coming here and you're wondering about masks in shops, uh, my advice would just be wear one. It stops you having to think about it. It's just, you know, Kind of makes it easier and I think increasingly Icelandic shops are just saying okay well, this is what we want in our shop just to clarify things. So um, all of this talk of uh, Covid and travel restrictions and whatever might make you think that the, the world is falling apart I hope it's not I couldn't possibly say um, but yeah so we've got a pandemic we've got climate change we've got political instability in a lot of places but there has been a study by an English university, the Anglia, Anglia Ruskin University, uh, which released its findings last week, uh, which pointed out that, well, uh, suggested that Iceland is actually uh, one of the best places to be at the end of the world, or when there's a kind of widespread societal collapse, um, which is encouraging for those of us who are here and quite nice. Um, they looked at a variety of uh, considerations. 
um, and things like island nations, uh, which are largely self-sufficient in energy, with small populations, which are quite uh, technologically advanced, quite complicated societies, um, fared very well. To be honest with you, uh, Iceland didn't come top, um, <laughs> New Zealand came top, which doesn't really surprise me because New Zealand is a beautiful country and uh, one of my other favourite places in the world as well, other than Iceland. Uh, so New Zealand came top, so props to New Zealand, um, but Iceland came in the top five, um, as indeed did Ireland, which is quite interesting. So um, yeah, if you're looking for a place to you know, hide in the end times, um, if you think it is the end times, then you could do a lot worse than, than Iceland. Um, so that's actually just a nice interesting little, uh, nice interesting little thing to sort of dark, uh, lighten the, the, maybe the dark news. Speaking of fluffy stories, um, those of you who have been watching for the last couple of weeks will know that you, uh, will know that we're very interested in, uh, bringing you cucumber season stories. So it's, it's what in Britain we would call the silly season in Iceland. There's no political news, well, other than COVID, which isn't political, obviously. But there's no news because the whole thingy, the parliament has gone on uh, recess. And um, yeah, so uh, journalists are looking for stories. It's called cucumber season because they then uh, uh, look for stories and they end up running stories about the price of cucumbers or the size of the cucumber yield. Um, and we found out from uh, YouTube viewers that we also have cucumber season in Denmark, Czech Republic and Germany. And last week, uh, helpful YouTube viewers told us that they also have it in Netherlands, Slovakia and Poland. So it seems to be a, a truly international um, concept. Anyway, here's a cucumber season story. So, uh, Vizir, which is a, a very fine um, news website in Iceland, uh, reported that uh, the day before yesterday, which is Saturday, uh, a light plane was seen coming down near the N1 service station, so a gas station, in a place called Arnes, which is, or Arnes, which is about 100 kilometres inland, east of Reykjavik. And it's a small place, apparently only 50, 60 people live there, according to the most recent census. The plane was seen coming down near the, the gas station, so the local population ran over thinking that it was crash landing. Um, but uh, they turned up and found that this very small plane had taxied into the N1 gas station, which is just a regular gas station for cars and whatever, and was refueling. Um, it was piloted by a middle-aged American woman. Uh, nobody seems to have got her name, but there are photos of this and a video as well, um, which I will link to in the description so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. She refueled her plane, got back in the plane, and then taxied off back down the highway um, and took off. Uh, and that part has been captured on video by, uh, by one of the locals. Um, so this is an interesting thing. I don't think the grapevine could really uh, condone landing your plane, even a small light aircraft, on uh, a highway. But apparently she did so and nobody was hurt. I mean, I have to say, if she'd hit a car while she was doing that, this could be a very different news story and it certainly wouldn't be a cucumber season story. But apparently nobody got hurt, she took off. And, uh, and there you go. So watch the video, it's quite funny. Um, I particularly like the fact that when she takes her plane off, uh, another car joins the road behind her as if it's just a normal piece of traffic. This is one of the things I love about Iceland, actually. Stuff like this can happen. Apparently there's no massive police investigation or uh, nobody's up in arms about this, so nobody got hurt. Woman landed her plane, refueled it, took off, and everybody got on with their day, uh, which I quite like, anyway. So I'm sure it's against the road rules. So there's your breaking road rules story on the uh, cucumber, cucumber season slot. So uh, he said, looking at his phone again in a Valoresque uh, manner. Um, I want to point out to uh, you uh, Bakatjörn. So this is Bakatjörn. A tjörn is a word for a pond or a lake. And as you can see, it's got some beautiful birds on it. It's got some Arctic terns on it. These ones don't seem to be nesting, so we're, we're hoping that they're not gonna come and peck us, um, but you never know. Um, there's various eider ducks, and there's some gray lag geese over there, gray geese. Um, and it has swans as well. Usually in the winter, you come here and it's frozen over and it's covered in swans. The swans go north for the summer. They have summer homes up in um, Akureyri and places like that. But when it's too cold up there in the winter, they come down here. Um, to the frozen pond and then they just kind of walk around on the pond looking uncomfortable. Yeah, I can see you, you're close. I, I, right, we get it. They may still be nesting here, so we won't spend too long. But it's a beautiful place to come for a, 
come for a walk, and I often do. So I think that's all the Icelandic news that you could possibly need, and, and some that you probably didn't. Um, so there just remain a few things for me to say. As usual, thank you to Einstuck, our uh, beer, our beer sponsor. We love Einstuck. Try the pale ale. I'll keep saying it until they send me a case of it. And uh, yeah, check out our High Five Club. There's a, a link in the description below, and also our shop. It's great when you come to the shop on the High Five Club. Um, because it really helps us financially. The shop, you can buy cool stuff, volcano stuff, um, Icelandic food and clothing and things like that. And with the High Five Club, you get uh, um, preferential access to Grapevine, uh, to Grapevine content, including our magazine. And I think that maybe a lot of our YouTube uh, friends don't realise that at its core, the Grapevine is a magazine. We've been running for almost 20 years and we publish monthly. Um, Obviously, we distribute within Iceland, but we also send abroad. So if you're interested in having a print version um, of the grapevine and you weren't aware of it, you can get a subscription and we can deliver wherever you are in the world. And it has a lot more, uh, it has news in it, but also has a lot more culture, uh, arts, food, um, things like that. It's a fantastic magazine. And every month we have to um, knuckle down for a week, which happens to be this week. We call it print week. And, uh, and really uh, get the print, uh, get, really work hard to get the print out on the, uh, the print version out on the streets. What that means is sometimes we can't go to the volcano. Um, so we're going to try very hard later on this week to go to the volcano because we know how much you love the volcano news. Um, not much has happened there, I don't think, to, to um, update. But we, uh, we'll try and get out there for you later on this week uh, once we've got the print version um, to bed and out on the streets. So. Um, I think the only other thing to say, really, is to uh, oh, point out that Polly and Valer still have uh, tours in uh, Reykjavik. If you're in Reykjavik, you want to meet Polly and Valer and uh, Bjartmar and go for a two-hour walk with them around Reykjavik, uh, you can do that. We still have uh, some dates in August. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, so go and do that and enjoy that and, and meet the guys. And uh, finally, subscribe uh, if you like our YouTube stuff. The volcano updates, the sagas, uh, what we do on the newscast, all of it. Um, subscribe, it really helps us to get those figures up and we appreciate you doing that. So that's it from me. Um, Valor, all things being equal, uh, if he gets back from his soggy south coast excursion, should be with us um, next week. So for now, I'll say uh, and take care. Bye.